Hello to everyone watching. I am so glad you're joining us for another a and video. In this series, we're answering your questions about faith and life. I'm gonna jump into the third book in the New Testament of the Bible. It's called John's Gospel, or another way to think about it is John's biography of Jesus. We read these words, but when he, the spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all truth. When it comes to this finding the truth business, Jesus says that we have a helper, the spirit of truth, or to use a different phrase, the Holy Spirit. Which brings us to our question for this video, what is the Holy Spirit? Now, when I use a phrase like the Holy Spirit, you might be thinking of some kind of cosmic force, an impersonal power at work in the universe, but that's not what this is. I love Star Wars more than the average person, okay? Darth Vader is on my debit card, but the Christian faith didn't begin long, long ago in a galaxy far, far away. The Holy Spirit is not the force. He is a personal being. One scholar puts it this way, the Holy Spirit is an individual being with self-consciousness and will capable of feeling and choosing and having a reciprocal relationship with other personal and social beings. So based on that definition, I think we need to tweak our question for today just a tiny bit. Who, not what, is the Holy Spirit? The Holy Spirit is a member of what Christians call the Trinity. Now we don't find that word in scripture, but believers have used it for a long time to describe the mystery of the one eternal God who exists in three persons, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Now I know it feels like we jumped into some pretty deep theological waters and you probably have some questions about the Trinity, but don't worry because we're gonna devote an entire video to that topic. So for now, we can just stay focused on the Holy Spirit. I, along with the vast majority of Christ followers around the world and throughout history, will refer to the Holy Spirit as a he instead of an it. Now, please don't let the pronouns trip you up here. I'm not talking about gender. I'm using the language given to us in scripture that designates the personhood of the Spirit because that's what we read about in scripture. 1 Corinthians 2, 10 through 11 says that the Holy Spirit has person-like qualities. He has intelligence and knows the deep things of God. Later we read that he has a will of his own and distributes spiritual gifts as he sees fit. In Ephesians 4, 30, it shows us, shows us that the Holy Spirit has emotions and we can actually cause him pain. According to Jesus, the Spirit lets you know when you've stepped out of bounds and to use language from a previous video, when we've sinned. How about this? In Romans 8, Paul says that when we experience times of difficulty and hardships, and I imagine and know that's probably all of us, the Holy Spirit prays for us when we don't have the words to say. Now that's a truth that can help you and I weather the storms of life. I guess what I'm trying to say is not only is the Holy Spirit a person, but he is personal. In the same Bible reference we mentioned earlier, Jesus calls him our advocate. And when you and I surrender our life to Jesus, scripture says that the Holy Spirit takes up residence in you. The Holy Spirit of God becomes closer than your very next breath. Now we have barely scratched the surface of what that means. And if you still have questions, welcome to the club. I am a member. I'll be the first to tell you there's more that I have questions about as I continue to dive in. But please come back because we are gonna have more videos that answer questions like, what are charismatic gifts? What about speaking in tongues? Or the idea that the Holy Spirit can heal a person from a disease. So please stay tuned. We are gonna return back to those topics. Please also let us know if you have any questions. We would love to hear from you. And make sure if you're not already, subscribe to these videos so we'll see you next time.